Japanese tripod that ever existed. Primarily of men from El Paso and Pueblo counties. 
which camped in what is now Old Colorado City prior to participating in a Stamps Creek massacre, which resulted in the murder of hundreds of Cheyenne and Arapaho people, mostly women and children. These men's names are still honored through our community as lasting legacies of violence. This land acknowledgement must be more than a symbolic gesture of simply addressing our past, but will represent the city of Colorado Springs to the names to our ongoing future relationships by continuing to consult with tribal governments, evaluating indigenous representation throughout our city, and shedding light on our own difficult history. 1598, Conquistador Juan de Oñate founded an extensive Spanish territory, parts of which included modern day Colorado. 1820, Edwin James is credited as the first person to ascend by speak, but the two ancestors were the first to sum summit Tabacabi. To honor the cultural significance of Tabacabi, new to spiritual practitioners maintain the tradition of visiting the summit and making offerings and prayers at certain times of the year. 1849, Judea Abiquo was to guarantee free passage of U.S. citizens through the territory along with military posts and Indian agencies of the U.S., promised annuities and protection against depredations by U.S. citizens. 1851, Treaty of Fort Laramie grants the Cheyenne and Arapaho the lands between the Arkansas and North Platte rivers, including most of the Colorado Front Range in exchange for allowing safe passage to settlers along the Oregon Trail. 1858, beginning of Pike Speed Gold Rush. 1861, Fort Wise Treaty establishes a reservation for the Cheyenne and Arapaho along the Arkansas River in eastern Colorado and cedes most of the Front Range to the United States. Although only 10 Cheyenne and Arapaho signed it and would, many would later say they did not understand the term, they did not attend to see the lands granted them under the 1851 Colorado Treaty. No more than Rapaho signed this treaty, which was confirmed in 1960 by the Indian Claims Commission. The majority of the Cheyenne and Arapaho did not move to the reservation, and conflicts between white settlers and indigenous people continued, ultimately leading to the Santa Cruz massacre. 1863, Conecos Treaty forced the Sabarche Band of Youths to relinquish claims to all lands of the Continental Divide to include the Front Range. The U.S. government designates O'Reilly as the de facto leader of all youths. No other land to be signed this treaty. 1964, Governor Edmonds proclaims proclamation providing permission to kill all hostile Indians is issued. This proclamation has yet to be rescinded in 2021. Also 1864, the Sand Creek Massacre. 675 volunteer soldiers attacked and killed hundreds of Cheyenne, mostly women and children. Many of these soldiers were from the 3rd Colorado Cavalry. Before departing, the troops burned the village and mutilated the dead, carrying on body parts as trophies. 1865, the Arkansas Treaty displaced with this place with Cheyenne and Arapaho to Oklahoma. This treaty was later amended to include the Hickory Apache, Comanche, and Potomac nations. 1868, Treaty creates a consolidated reservation for all of Colorado's native towns on the western slope. 1880, after the Meeker incident of 1879, the U.S. government aggressively forces North Indian towns to sign an agreement, removing them from the states. Southern Indian towns remain on the reservation in Colorado, south of Colorado. 1912, dedication of youth travel. 1924, indigenous people become U.S. citizens. 1926, Thomas Spring Pavilion, named by General Palmer after the Medocantin Dakota Guide that led the Yuan Pipe to the future site of our city. 1942, Fort Carson, named after famous Indian fighter Kit Carson, was founded. In 1863, Carson was responsible for waging a destructive war against the Mexican that resulted in their removal to the Four Corners areas to southeastern New Mexico. When bands of Navajo refused to accept confinement on reservations, Carson terrorized the Navajo lands through his forged earth campaign, burning crops, destroying villages, slaughtering livestock. Carson rounded up 50,000 Navajo, marched them across New Mexico from Brooklyn on the Bosque del Dongo Reservation, over 300 miles from their homes. 3,000 Navajo people died. This event is called the Dongo. 1970, people are able to finally vote in the state of Colorado. 2020, ending on a great note, Colorado Springs, 
City Council unanimously approves a permanent Indigenous Peoples Day resolution. So there's plenty to look forward to.
Uh, one at Fraser Gallery on July 22nd at the same time. Uh, so here's a little bit about my book. There's some uh, sample pages over there at the table. Uh, I'll be hanging out there after the presentation so you can come and talk to me and ask me questions. Uh, so uh, looking at uh, release a couple of weeks from now, it's a hardcover coffee table book with 195 pages and 75 pairs of clothes. Uh, it has a section with my notes, which are my journal entries for each of the photos that I took. Uh, there are forwards by Nurse Others, uh, John, and uh, John Spears and Brett Lovello and the PPL machine, uh, and also Matt Bangory from the Pioneers Museum. And uh, it will be carried in the Pioneers Museum gift shop, as well as some other uh, shops around town. And it will have a booth at the July 31st celebration, uh, which is downtown, and uh, we want to invite everybody to show up for that. Uh, it's going to be a great event from, I believe, noon till 8, uh, basically from the Pioneers Museum stretching along from to the uh, Olympic Museum. So at this time, I would like to invite the CEO and head dude of the library, John Spears, to come up and say a few words. So it's important now to reflect on the past as we look towards creating the next 150 years of Colorado Springs. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for filling this place once again with people who want to learn, who want to be together, and want to share and experience. So we're pleased to host this exhibit moving forward. Then and now exhibit at our library. Oh, what's that? But, um, <laughs> 
is going to be something that we might just given us to get to this point that we are so happy that we're going to be able to be one of the vehicles for getting that out. So like our collections, this exhibit ultimately belongs to all of you. It belongs to our entire community. The present day residents, those who came before us, and in the spirit of what public libraries mean for all of those who have come after us. So thank you for joining us. And this time, I'd like to introduce Leah Davis Goodrow, Curator of History at the Colorado Springs Communist Museum. Colorado College, the Colorado Springs Pioneers Museum, 
to make sure that your story is a part of our community's history going forward. So once again, congratulations, Mike Puck, and thank you to the wonderful Pikes Peak Library District for hosting this event.
library districts, archives, and other repositories. Among the noteworthy photos are Nikola Tesla in his lab with lightning bolts erupting around his head, the Pikes Peak Climb Rose, and many local landmarks. Mr. Park's personal touch combined with perspectives shows Colorado Springs remarkable and diversity. On this, the occasion of the 150th anniversary of Colorado Springs, members of the House of Representatives are proud to recognize and thank Mr. Mike Pop for his dedication to present the rich history of Colorado Springs and Colorado. On request of State Representatives Terry Carter, Tony Exum, Andy Pico, Tim Geithner, Mark Snyder, Shane Sandridge, Dave Williams, and Mary Bradford. Given this ninth day of July, 2021, State Capitol, Denver, signed Alec Garnett, Speaker of the House of Representatives. So, yes, you, you saved me. 
And I'm sure there's some people I forgot. So if I forgot you, you know who you are, and thank you very much. Um, I want to give uh, special thanks to all of our sponsors, uh, Colorado Springs uh, Chamber and EDC. And uh, thank you very much for your support. Uh, the Dean Rayberg Foundation, the Cultural Office of the Pikes Peak Region, also known as Copper, and the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs. Uh, I hope that you've been enjoying tonight's food, which was donated by the Picnic Basket Catering Collective, and the delicious drinks uh, from Jake over at 1315 Stilly, as well as Pikes Peak Lemonade. And Pat, I hope you've really been enjoying it. Have you ever done this? <laughs> if you know what happy hour is all about, but they make donuts flavored with alcohol. So we did a special donut tonight without any alcohol called the 1871 Maple in, uh, in honor of General Palmer and the dry community that College Creek wants most. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> and guess what? Nominations are starting to happen for the best of Colorado Springs to the Colorado Springs Independent. So some of the sponsors that we have here tonight are part of those categories, and why not nominate me? <laughs> I'm, reminded, I'm reminded of something my dad used to say to me, if you don't ask, you don't get <laughs> All right, so uh, sit back and relax. We're going to play the documentary film. This is the debut, the worldwide debut of the fantastic